and you're welcome back to the program very quickly now let's uh, set the ball rolling for our conversation on the newspaper review segment today but we had been joined by honorable Cletus obon uh, virtually and uh, he will be sharing his deep insights into uh, these developing stories surrounding the seizure of Nigeria's presidential jets in France, as well as the squabble between the federal government, the Ogun state government, and a Chinese firm, Zongshan. Hello, Honorable. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. It's wonderful to have you on the program. Well, let's uh, just set things straight. The federal government has been quite uh, on their toes, as well as the Ogun State Government, in trying to recover the seized presidential jets. First of all, I just want to get your reaction to the fact that these jets could be seized in a foreign land. But let me say that the, the international courts and treaties to which Nigeria is a signatory has protocols that naturally will be activated in the event of situations like this. So the alarm, I think, for me is premature. The reason is that, yes, it is right for Nigeria to be worried about their assets, their national assets, especially in foreign land. But I do not think that the federal government is already in trouble over the issue of recovery. So I think that Nigerians should be patient and allow the due process of international protocols under these situations to take their normal course. There is no way properties of that nature will just be forfeited on account of an attempt to do so. You saw the IPIB problem in the UK, and you saw what the court did. It took the last uh, vice president, Oshibajo, and uh, our minister of justice for us to get uh, justice from uh, uh, the court in the UK for us to recover monies that were about to be illegally uh, forfeited from Nigeria. So here again we are in another situation of this nature, and I think we have some of the best friends ever and the best brains in the legal profession to get us out of this mess. So I, I, I don't think there's anything to worry about. I don't think there's anything to worry about. Well, well, certainly, in as much as you have shared your thoughts that there is nothing to be worried about and that uh, the federal government is not in hot water yet, uh, what seemed to have informed the prominence that has been given to the seizure of these jets, uh, the, the frantic news coverage all over uh, news tabloids in the country. I mean, more than 10 newspaper publications have this particular story as their, as their headline story. And it seems to me that uh, it's, it's rather a little bit uh, too widespread to be overlooked like that. No, no, there is no way it can be overlooked. It is part of the duty of the media to highlight this in the event that the other arms of government, both the, especially the executive, will go to sleep. So it is the duty of the press to be the watchman over all arms of government. That's why it's called the fourth estate of the realm. So this prominence for me, there's nothing wrong with the news of past getting worried. If they do not do so, then they'll be neglecting their duty. Having done that, it has put the Nigerian government on its toes, not just to uh, get the assets recovered, not just to protect them, but to know that Nigerians are interested in what happens to their assets. Because these are public assets that are gotten from taxpayers' money, and therefore where they were even inherited. What that means is that you cannot fritter away your own inheritance and your own heritage with such frivolity. And therefore, for me, the newspapers covering it and the newspapers highlighting it and giving it the wide publicity that it deserves is to tell the executive and especially those in government elected and appointed officials that they have a responsibility and a duty to protect national assets. So to that extent, all hands are on deck. And since all hands are on deck, meaning that everybody, the public, the citizens, the voters, the, 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 the media, the professionals, and the government have a duty to protect. So I think I do not feel that anybody has done anything wrong in highlighting the fact that an asset is endangered or about to be lost. And therefore, everything should be put in place to produce and redeem it. However, let me sound this. 
it is always part of our national malaise that those who put us in these conditions are always left off the hook. There was definitely an act of negligence, if not fraudulent errors that were made in putting us in these conditions. I would like that after the recovery, those who put us in this pernicious condition should be brought to book and punished. It is a lack of punishment, lack of deterrence that makes people attempt to do this. Thing. We just finished from Nigerian air now. Nobody is about to go to jail. And here we are again with presidential jets. That means even our president can join the throne overboard, thrown under the bus, and At the whim of some fraudulent officials. So I think that they should be, after this, let's chase away the kite and come to the quarrel with the hen. But for now, our focus should be on the recovery and thereafter. Those who put us in this condition should be brought to book. C certainly, I, I agree to your assertions that our focus as a nation should be on the recovery of these jets. And, uh, you know, people should be brought, brought to book perpetrators of this should be punished. However, there seems to be some sort of uh, uh, shadiness with regards to what deal was, you know, what deal went wrong between the Yogun state government and the Zhangshan Chinese company. Do you have any insight as to the backdrop of what led up to these events? I will not give you details, but my understanding of the international protocols is that a sub-nationality like Ogun State, if it goes into any deal with any foreign concern, any sovereign country, it must be guaranteed by the sovereignty of Nigeria. That is to say, for it to deal with anything, whether it is a loan, whether it is a grant, the federal government of Nigeria must guarantee that. That is under international protocols. Evidently, therefore, something must have gone wrong in that deal, and that's why the federal government is the one for fitting. That is my suspicion. And that is why I'm saying that and we should not distract ourselves from the recovery in order to chase who did what at this stage. At this stage, it is a recovery that Islam must recover its assets and come back and deal with the details of what transpired and what went wrong and who caused it or may have caused it deliberately, otherwise, or let us now know those. But that should come after the recovery. I am that Nigeria must have guaranteed a good state on a particular deal with that company and now that it, the deal didn't sell through or has gone awry, Nigeria is being asked to forfeit on account of its guarantee. Well, it, guarantee. It, it, it appears also that the Chinese company has gone berserk. Apart from, um, you know, the, the order, the court order to hold down these uh, presidential jets in Paris, there are also threats of you know, seizure of Nigeria's assets, foreign assets in about eight countries, as we have seen captured on the news. Uh, yes, recovery efforts should be made for the jets, but how can we forestall the Chinese company from attempting to uh, seize other assets in other parts of the world, especially especially let, let in the U.S. Let, and the U.K.? Let me say this to you. The Chinese can go overboard on account of the kind of clauses that are always included in deals of this nature, in agreements of this nature. Most of our nationals, when they go into this agreement, get into outlandish clauses that sometimes implicate the country. Like you saw the case of I IPID. You saw what happened there. So those clauses were simply in, in, impossible clauses. Now, as for the seizure, the Chinese government cannot go beyond what the papers say, and there must be some diplomatic protocols that will prevent them from going to get into those kind of... Don't forget that China also has a lot of investment in Nigeria. So there can be retaliatory sanctions. So Nigeria is not helpless and cannot be helpless. So China must have to tread softly because we are a big partner and a big uh, 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 partner with uh, economic uh, hub for China in Af on the African continent if not anywhere else in the world. Nigeria is one of the biggest uh, 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 hosts to Chinese business concerns. So they just have to be very careful and tread with caution because Nigeria is not going to lay back and watch its assets being threatened across the world because China too 
has things here that Nigeria can walk onto and deal with. And China will be definitely hurt by those kind of concerns. The entire Africa put together yes. does not have half of the assets that China has in Nigeria. So let us not get to the point where China will start threatening our assets in different countries. Nigeria has a fallback position, and that position is also very strong. So I do not think that uh, we are in any danger at all with China. What? But it is good to raise this alarm. It's good to raise this alarm early enough so Nigeria trades with caution and China should also trade with caution because both ways it can be zero sum game. Well, uh, you, you have highlighted that uh, the way Nigeria has assets abroad and, um, you know, it does business with China, China also has its assets here in Nigeria, which we all know of. I mean, the bilateral trade agreement between Nigeria and China is one that has been on for quite some time and it's been thriving very well. But do you also think, in your opinion, that this might sort of severe the uh, international relationship between Nigeria and uh, the, you know, Chinese nationals? China will in, lose in more any way. If, they get, if there is any friction between Nigeria and China today. Nigeria, as China has more investments in Nigeria than Nigeria has in China. So if anybody is going to be hot, it is China interest that will be hot in Nigeria and on the African continent. So Nigeria is a member of the AU African Union, is a member of ECOWAS. So Nigeria can also invoke the support of its brothers on the on the continent and yes. hot Chinese interest. Chinese investment in Africa is huge and Nigeria is a big player on the African continent and its, its economy. So you cannot just wish away whatever you think. With over 250 million people, Nigeria is a big market for any country on planet Earth. Therefore, to get us into the situation in which we want to embarrass Nigeria on account of a subnational inability to live up to its business obligations will be getting the matter out of hand and overboard. So I think there should be some level of mutual respectability in diplomatic relations between the two countries. For its economic interest and its political interest, the two countries need to sufficiently deal with each other at a level in which there can be no hurt because this jet matter is one dot of Chinese investment. So it, and that company cannot, and China cannot allow that company, can even buy up debt. Is that not, China not buying up debt for other African countries and other interests? So why would this one be so much that a Chinese company can become a, a problem to Chinese interest on, in Africa and Africa's uh, biggest economic giant? Well, uh, Honorable Cletus, uh, one of the, you know, most controversial figures in the country and someone who is, you know, really vocal and outspoken, especially uh, with regards to happenings surrounding uh, the federal government, who is also uh, the uh, Labour Party presidential candidate in the last elections, uh, Peter Obi, has also made some strong uh, statements with regards to this development. And in his words, he called it an international embarrassment at a time when uh, other stakeholders, including the Ogun State government, the Ogun State governor, even uh, Bayo Nanuga, are all saying that the Chinese company, Zhangshun, uh, you know, made a fraudulent move by seeking that order to hold down these jets and seize other assets abroad. What do you make of this statement from uh, Peter Obi that has trailed so many newspaper headlines in the country this morning? Now, let me say this about uh, Peter Obi. He has declared himself um, a, 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 a critic of this government and, and as an opposition figure, he has a right to make those uh, observations about his country and feel the way he feels. But sometimes when you make a tomato of a teacup, we begin to understand that you are taking politics beyond that because you seek to rule a country that you want to run down. So when you say it's an embarrassment, you are a Nigerian. He is a Nigerian, not just another Nigerian. He has been governor. He aspires to rule this country. Therefore, his first duty is to protect the territorial integrity and the dignity of Nigeria and Nigerians anywhere, anytime. So to keep screaming on the newspapers to make that, I mean, you will never, when um, Osama bin Laden was terrorizing the world and the Afghans and, uh, were making those, uh, uh, all kinds of uh, crises and then the Twin Towers, you didn't hear any Democrat or Republican stand on the side of those people to come and say this is an embarrassment to America. It became one America. So when Nigeria has an international threat, our first impulse as Nigerians is to defend the dignity of Nigeria because at the end of it, 
it might be a turn tomorrow to rule. How will you feel when you are country and where do you carry your international passport to when you get to an airport and you are treated like garbage just because of what you have said about your own country? So denigrating your country, making degrading your own president or in the name of political party interest does not in any way show patriotism. That is not my definition of patriotism. There must be a big line and divide between partisanship and nationalism. So the national interest now is being threatened. And therefore, those presidential that will outlive this tenor. The eight years of Tinubu will come and go, and the next person comes in. Will you now, those assets, will they now become a Tinubu and APC asset? They are Nigerian assets. They are not APC assets. They are not Tinubu assets. They are not Yoruba or Igbo assets. They are Nigerian assets. So defend them first, then thereafter. If you have solutions, you can suggest them. If you have your contacts and connections and you have any solution, you should present it because at your level, you have access to the presidency and access to authorities. So you bring solutions. You don't bring condemnation at the stage like this. So if your nation is in crisis, what you bring on board is first, is thereafter, like I said, you cannot call home and say, who did this and why did you do it? You cannot start with this type of uh, school board politics because this is completely juvenile at a stage where you have a serious crisis like this, of this nature. We expect statesmen to come out and make statement statements that will procure problems and not to exacerbate them or uh, escalate them in order to score cheap political points. The must be a stop to partisanship on matters of this nature. Well, that is well, for well, me, certainly, my take on that. Certainly, because I, this is I agree. Matter to partisan. Yes, carry on, carry on, honorable. <laughs> It is partisan to say that it's an embarrassment. So thereafter, we now know it is an embarrassment. Therefore, we should do what? Every, the heads must roll. People should be crucified. People should be killed. Yes, I know in some communist countries, people get a death sentence for this type of things. And like you said, by the time you, you finish this exercise, you will discover that the Chinese or the company was trying to make a, 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 make a huge... Uh, just raise us where there is nothing yes. and in order to just defraud the country believing that there were too many loose ends especially in the agreement and therefore they want to take advantage of it so by the time the Ogun state government comes out and the federal government supporting them comes out with a clean slate we shall now know the truth like you i, I told you before this is not the first time we have seen people coming to agreement with nigeria you got it the, we have just finished the Ethiopia air matter where a court had to now uh, uh, quash the entire deal on account of its fraudulent content so this may be one of them. And most of our, you had uh, the other day, one of the special aid to the President, uh, uh, um, President Buhari yes. came out here to see how people went to cut deals and sign agreements that were clearly fraudulent in order to get pers gratif personal gratification against the country. This may be just one of them. And I imagine that at the end of this, those, those uh, assets are going to be recovered and people must be made to pay for it. That is my emphasis. It should not be swept under the carpet anymore. Just like the Ethiopian air matter, I do not expect that people were not being prosecuted and you, the people are now, uh, others are, will not take a cue and say nothing will happen after all and then continue to put the country in this condition in which several millions and billions of naira are lost on a daily basis on account of some fraudulent officials of government. So for me, I think that Peter B should draw a line between when he plays the role of a statesman and when he plays partisan politics when we are campaigning. Well, cer cer people. certainly, patriotism uh, and the role of a statesman, statesmanship should be the focal point of uh, any Nigerian in this very difficult and trying time. Now, Honorable, let's uh, move away from this particular discussion to yet another development where the federal government has uh, approved the implementation of zero duty uh, VAT exemption on selected food items being imported into the country. This has been in the news and a lot of Nigerians, I believe, uh, have been expecting this to come to play. And finally, it is here. What does this mean for Nigerians? And how will this help curtail the food crisis that we are currently facing as a nation? I think this is one of the smartest moves by the economic team of this president. And it shows that this president is a listening president. Uh, it is, goes again, it's not the first time he's doing that. Since he's come on board in the past 12 or 13 months, in the past 13 or 14 months, he has demonstrated that he's a Democrat. Because each time there's an outcry against a policy, 
we have a way of reversing it. And as I said, all the time, presidency or leadership is not, it's not a popularity contest. You are not seeking to be popular. You are seeking to bring the best for the greater majority, the best interest of, to serve the best interest of the greater majority of people in the country. The few vocal people cannot overwhelm the large vulnerable people. The large vulnerable people must always at all times play on the hands of a leadership, especially in times of crisis. And this president has risen to the occasion again. President Tinubu has again demonstrated that he listens and that his brain and his hands are on dead and he knows clearly where he is going to. This food rebate, this import duty remover, this food crisis that has almost put, eaten up our country, we just escaped a major, major crisis in our country during the protest. And I think with this lift, it should not stop there. It is laudable that the implementation, like all other policies of government, must this time have a team to monitor that importation. Because people are still going to try to cut deals and put something in the minds, in the hearts, and in the houses of people in this country, especially the vulnerable in the rural areas. It is my contention that the president should not just lift this ban, should not just take off this tax break and the duty break. It should also be implemented with focus. And that is to say, there should be something of a tax force. Since there are no commodity boards, since there are no commodity boards, let there be a tax force to implement this and ensure that from the border to the market, to the final consumer, there should be a tax force to ensure that Nigerians take full benefit of what the government is doing. Because some other mindless elements in this country are going to harp on this and use it to punish Nigerians even more. We are seeing it in the case of petroleum. Between Abuja and Uguja, between Ecom and Calabar, the price of petrol keep dropping, yet they pick this fuel from the same depots and tank farms across the country. You are going to get this with these food items again. That is where the prices are coming from. All this boils down to the price of fuel. Because you cannot carry a bag of rice from Lagos to Bumazi, my village, and it is costing you more than the price you bought it in Lagos. Well, in terms of talking, about, talking about the relativity of, um, you know, uh, the, uh, prices of fuel, you know, not being uh, tantamount to the prices of goods being transported. There is, however, a little bit of concern by most Nigerians that despite the rising prices of uh, items, especially food items, a new report has come out that inflation rate in the country has dropped by about 33.40% thereabout. If inflation rates has dropped by over 30%, why aren't the prices of food items dropping? And why are we seeing a liter of fuel nearing 1,000 Naira in the FCT? and other parts of the country? I have told you that there is a correlation between the price of oil and the price of food. There is a correlation. So it, it, it has nothing to do with there inflation? Is a direct rates? Proportional, there is a, 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 a proportional increase in food prices on account of the, the increase in fuel prices. So because the transportation cost is high, you are going to build it into the cost of food. Now, let me tell you this. I am in the rural area as you speak to me now. I can tell you the price of a basin of Gary, which is like uh, 25 kg, which used to be 35,000 last week, is now 24,000 as of today. Before I, you called me onto this program, I was just trying to do that survey across the villages, not in your urban areas where people are inflating prices. From 35,000 to 24,000 as of this morning, as I speak to you. That means Two of them put together is uh, uh, 48,000 for 100 kg or 50 kg is 45. So if you, if at 100 kg, you are going to get that uh, uh, 48,000 yeah. instead of from 100 or 75,000. What that means for you is that by the time you move it from here to Abuja, the price of 950 naira per liter of oil as we buy it here where I'm sitting, a price of oil, a liter of oil is 950 naira. That's almost a thousand naira, like you rightly pointed out. What that means is that before you take this journey from here at 24,000 or 48,000 to Abuja, the price on the road will now, the cost of transportation is going to be built into it. That is the main reason. And that is why I am shocked 
that Nigerians are busy talking about food prices without relating it to food prices. We must have to hold those accountable in NNPC to refine fuel. If we don't refine fuel, this problem will exacerbate and will be sustained and will never abate. That is our cross. If we can do that, all these matters overnight will go down. I can assure you about that. As long as we keep trading and people are trading with our lives in the refineries and in NNPC, as long as just that cartel is sitting down there, beating down the neck of Nigerians and it is not wiped out, this president must be brought to ask that he takes out an NPC and reforms it. You cannot do anything in NNPC beyond the total surgery and taking out everybody who has sat there for the past 10 years in the leadership of NNPC. But, Until but, that happens... But, 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 we, we have seen price. that the Dangote refinery, the, the surgeons of Dangote refinery seem to have been a beacon of hope for Nigerians and there were even speculations that Dangote refinery could, you know, peg its uh, full petrol price per liter at about 600 naira, which is slightly lower than the official uh, pump price that we have coming in from the NNPCL. However, these claims have been uh, debunked by Dangote refineries though, but do you think that somehow this has some sort of correlation with the refusal of NNPCL and MDPRA to sell crude oil to Dangote refineries and other uh, local uh, 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 companies in Naira. I mean, since the directive was given by President Bola Metinubu, we have not seen that directive come into play up till now. Is this why, is this uh, forestalling of uh, the directive causing for prices to still skyrocket? Let me tell you, as a political economist, I will tell you that all that rigmarole, all that rigmarole is hot as signifying nothing. It doesn't cure anything. Selling in Naira or dollar does not cure anything. It is the availability of the product. That is where we are. We are not dealing with selling in Naira or... Why would you sell to Dangote in Naira? The only condition under which Dangote must, sell, must buy in Naira is that the fuel that is sold to him in Naira must be sold only to Nigeria. That it will never be exported. If you are going to export it and you are buying components in dollar, why will you be selling in Naira? So when you are going out, you also use Naira unless we join the BRICS the, 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 the BRICS uh, cartel, the BRICS cartel, Britain, Russia, and uh, uh, India, and uh, China, and South Africa. Unless you join them, you cannot be talking about Naira and dollar here. Because you can't be buying on one hand in dollar and coming back to sell in Naira and turn around to be looking for dollar to go out to export or import. So, as far as I'm concerned, we need to be more careful on that. What we are saying is, let Dangote produce and refine. Let MNPC4 refineries come on stream. They keep giving us dates. Must we continue to have bad days for one person how many times in a year? We heard about last December, we heard about April this year, now it's we are hearing been December. A, a continuous postponement. It's been a continuous postponement. But you, you also would recall the recent squabble, uh, the triangular squabble between the NNPCL, the NMDPRA, the Dangote refinery that you know lingered on and a lot of revelations were made, tempers fled, statements were made, calls for the dismissal of both Melekere and the NMDPRA boss were made. All of these things could have forestalled, forestalled the um, you know, action that is supposed to be taken by Dangote Refinery in ensuring that they dish out these uh, petroleum products to Nigerians at an affordable rate. Don't you think so, Honorable? I don't know why a surgeon who constantly goes into the theater and comes out with dead patients should be allowed to continue to stay there. To be allowed to continue to, to be in, in, in that hospital will not be dismissed and then his license seized. If MMPC under military has not been able to produce a liter of oil since he's coming in on stream and all his failed promises, should he not on his honor even resign? Why do we think that without military we cannot run MMPC? Somebody is hiding something somewhere. Why is that at, at the, 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 the uh, Ahmed of a man coming out to come and, uh, and spew that? kind of trash about uh, Dangote. Yes. I am not a fan of Dangote because he has been one of the people who have held the monopoly, if not a monopsony of this country. But on this matter of wealth, Nigerians have taken too much. And I think that the next surge 
of crisis is going to come from the production of petroleum in Nigeria. Nigeria should focus on that. Even the N N uh, uh, NLC and TUC have their members in NNPC. Nupen, Pengasen, and other such unions, which are under TUC and N uh, 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 NLC. What are they telling them? What are they telling the leadership of NLC that is happening in that, in, 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 in that oil cartel? What is the problem in that oil cartel that cannot be resolved? Why are we being punished with so much that God gave us free of charge? What is our crisis? It is aching to me that we are unable to come out. Are we saying that if military drops there today, God forbid, that NLPC will shut down? So, certainly not. What are, we trying to, what are we trying to prove? What are we trying to prove? What is he holding? What are people using him to do? Is he a fraud for some people in this country to punish the rest of us? Why should we have so much crude? I will, before now we say we cannot refine, so we are taking our crude abroad. And then we, we so have a refinery that is... That now is we working. have a refinery, you are telling us that we don't have crude. What kind of cyclical punishment is that? Is it now... Has it become a plague? Is the NFC now a plague or a, a pandemic for Nigerians? We need to have something to do drastic and urgent as well. But, but we Mele, need to have Mele, that. Mele Kerry, uh, you know, following a lot of allegations from different quarters of the country that... Um, you know, the NNPCL is being controlled by the oil cartel in the country and also that uh, they are thieves in NNPCL. According to, you know, claims and allegations, he made a statement recently in some, some of the national dailies and he said that Nigerians are not being fair to them at NNPCL and that they are not thieves. That time would reveal what is currently uh, wrong with the NNPCL. In fact, he doesn't even think that there is anything wrong with the NNPCL. Rather, there is a lot of misconception as to the workings of the, of the NNPCL and the challenges that they are facing as um, a company. Will a pig tell you that there's something wrong with mud? Will a pig tell you that there's anything wrong with mud when that is its habitat? So how will any uh, uh, military be the one is it in his mouth to tell us how NNPC is running or we that are feeling the pain that you tell him? How can he be his own examiner? How can he be his own examiner? I mean, discussing that kind of thing is very offensive to anybody who has brains. He should not be the one to tell us whether there is anything wrong or not wrong. We should be the ones to say so. What are we getting from NNPC? Nobody knows how much we, we produce. We are only guessing. Nobody knows how much we earn. The other day, uh, uh, the, the uh, 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 Federal Internal Revenue Services told us that they have never remitted anything to the federal government coffers. In all this, he's telling us that he doesn't know. In any case, like I said, it is not about military because those who are keeping him there are the ones that we should hold responsible and accountable. The because they know why they are keeping a man like that in that place. And why they are keeping the Raman uh, Ahmed in, in, in that place as well. There should be a total overhaul and total surgery in NNPC. I know that Dangote will not come out of this, and I, that's why he's backing down, because he has now been sufficiently battered and blackmailed into silence. But the, those of us who are consuming this product will not keep quiet about it. The Nigerian government, especially President Tinubu, who came from the oil sector, should know what to do with NNPC. He should know what to do with NNPC. He has to tell Nigeria what to do with NNPC. It is not privatization that is the solution. But, 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 it is but not. In, in your opinion, in your opinion, Honorable Cletus, uh, apart from calls for the sack of, you know, heads of these uh, government institutions, oil government institutions, what other measures, adequate measures, do you think can be taken to, you know, shake up uh, the, the NNPCL and bring it back to life to what it used to be? The first thing is what Dangote has done, and encourage more conglomerates and more individuals to go into refining of. I know Nigerians, I know a certain government in this state who is refining oil in Quebec. I have met him, and he told me that's why in Guinea and other places, all sorts of modular refineries all over the place. We should encourage that in Nigeria. In that way, we take off most of the pressure on NLPC and the iron grip it has on the neck of Nigerians. The second thing, like I said, is to do a total shake-up of that place. So keeping an NPC to... An NPC is at once a regulator and an operator. It cannot be. You can't be a regulator and then turn around to make it impossible for people within the industry to operate. 
these are some of the contradictions we have in our economic be matrix. Because being an operator and a regulator at the same time, it will be difficult to checkmate the organization if it Precisely. is faltering, which it is currently doing. Precisely what I'm talking about. And I'm saying that this president came from Mobile Exxon, one of the biggest conglomerates in oil industry in the world. So he should know what to do with NNPC. He's wasting too much time in taking decisive action on that. If he is understanding what is happening there, he should have known by now. And take action to free Nigerians from this cartel. We are suffering too much because of oil. The price of wealth and everything in Nigeria will go down. Because all, oh, like I said, the price of food is directly proportional to the price of oil. The price of food items and other such items in consumer and consumable items in Nigeria is directly proportional to the price of oil. Well, of course, whether you are talking about transportation, whether you are talking about the hairdresser, the organizer, whether you are talking about the person who is chilling ice cream or uh, Zobo, is depending on food because Nepal itself has even failed. So you can see that those two areas of energy, fuel and light, uh, power, the two put together are limited. What, and what? those two have held the prices of things and made things go over overboard. Well, Honorable Clayton, still talking about fuel, the prices of fuel and how difficult it is for Nigerians to access uh, this very, very vital commodity that drives the economy in the country. Uh, we saw a recent statement by uh, executives of the NMDPRA warning uh, petrol filling stations it's not to sell fuel to not to sell fuel to people in jerry cans. And we know the state of the electricity uh, situation in the country. People certainly need generators to be able to run their businesses. They need generators in their homes in case there is no light and, you know, all of these things. If people are bad from buying petrol in jerry cans and then there is no stable electricity, how are they expected to power the generators that they have purchased. It, 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 it's sort of, you know, it's a bit clogged when you look at it from a wider angle. What do you make of this, sir? First of all, the idea that you should stop people from buying the can as a way of making fuel available is an admission that there is a shortage of fuel. So you are saying that only those driving cars should would, would need fuel. Fuel is not meant for those who are driving cars alone. There, it is a source for doing other things. Like I said, the man who is grinding beans for the woman to fry a car needs fuel to, to power whatever he's using. To power his machine. The, 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 the hairdresser needs to power the machines that do hair drying and hair, uh, uh, hair, hair chilling and washing. He, she needs uh, fuel. The person who is uh, the vulcanizer, who is uh, uh, repairing your tires on the road, with a very bad road now, will need that to put in his machine to be able to even pump your tires. All these people need for it. So how do you stop one in, in favor of the other? It is punishing those who are already down. That is to say, to make the poor poorer and the rich richer. So cars, are, uh, petrol is not meant for only cars. Petrol is meant for use in different and diverse ways in the absence of steady power supply. And, and, and they have so, even gone so, ahead to threaten these petrol filling stations that they would uh, risk closure if eventually they are caught selling petrol to um uh, you know people using jerry cans however contrastly you would also see that on the highways in abuja or on the streets you'd find you know young men with jerry cans of fuel selling at you know black market rates where do they get this fuel, this uh, petrol uh, jerry cans from you know when you have an evil wind blowing at Across the land, and you try to do stop gap measures rather than looking for permanent solutions. You are bound to get nowhere except to be running rings with so much motion without movement. That is the truth and our situation of our situation as I speak to you today. You also apply it even to the ATM machines and the PO as the point of service uh, uh, machines. You are you not shocked? that you walk into an ATM machine right in front of the POS operator and then the, the ATM machine has no, no cash but the POS machine has more, the person with the POS has more cash than the ATM machine. What you you can withdraw hundreds of thousands of Naira from POS operators but it's yes, very rare to get them from ATMs. From ATM yes, 
now also you now come right in front of a filling station people are carrying the cans of fuel and they now see the person who came to come and buy to go and use in his shop or in his uh, his hair salon should not buy from a jerry can even for five liters you see trading with it so if you must have to stop that you must stop the sale of fuel on jerry cans on any street in nigeria that's the first place to say that the fuel will remain in the tanks in the filling stations because those things are, did not germinate. The, the, the fuel didn't just germinate from the ground. They start pouring from the ground into those that they can. It came from a filling station. So what is, the, what is the solution? The solution is simple. Bring enough supply and nobody will be standing on the road. You will not be quarreling about the cans. So that is not a solution at all. It's a very juvenile, a very childish way of looking at the solution to a very serious problem. Supply, if there is fuel everywhere, will you bother about how anybody is carrying his fuel? Certainly not. If I now have a generator, won't I use it? If I now have a, a bubbling saloon, won't I use it? If I am now using my vulcanizing machine, won't I use it? If I'm going to grind my beans, won't I use it? So if you have now go and start stopping people, you start stopping even the menial jobs who are more in number than even the government workers. Those in the informal sector are desirous of the use of power than any other means. In other words, you are going to send so many people to become jobless, especially those in the informal sector. That is what you are going to do. So you are sending people to become jobless and businesses to, small businesses to close. And here you are with several policies rolled out by government to ensure that people, these small businesses thrive. So how are they going to thrive without power, which is coming from petrol and energy, from, from, from light, from electricity? You don't have that, and then you're not giving the money to go and trade with what? And to do what with it? What, so you what what you will that as, as as we look to wrap up this segment there are just some other um news stories that i would want you to react to um top of which is the uh recent discovery of monkeypox in nigeria and other parts of uh, africa but focusing on nigeria now the ncdc has reported that about uh, 39 new cases of monkeypox have been discovered in the country and it seems to be spreading uh, what what do you make of this development and how did we find ourselves back into this um, epidemic uh, situation what the world you say is a global village so if you are very happy to be using internet created in china and america why won't you also contact uh, 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 monkeypox that you tra when you are traveling and mixing with this same people. So that is not uh, uh, I mean, with the level of volatility in, in terms of movement and mobility of men and labor. It is easy to contact some of these things from other countries. But what should be paramount to us is to the containment. Nigerian health authorities have demonstrated above average capacity to contain pandemics and epidemics worldwide more than any other country, even the so-called advanced countries. So I think that on this occasion, the, 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 the normal drug net that brought us out of uh, COVID, out of uh, Ebola, should be applied. And I think we have now developed sufficient capacity to contain uh, this kind of uh, epidemics and pandemics. I, this one will not be an exception, and I would like to see the health authorities, uh, the health minister is so supposed to come out the NCC, the disease control uh, department, should up to him and come again to do what it knows how to do. They have, like I said, demonstrated above average capacity to hold their own anytime, any day. And we are expecting them to once again pull this one out of us and curtail it at this stage so that the spread uh, will no longer become a threat. Nigeria. Certainly, certainly. Hope. Let's hope that the uh, National Center for Disease Control, uh, NSCDC, NCDC uh, comes, you know, to clear terms with how urgent this is and, uh, you know, curtails it as they have always done with other epidemics and diseases that have been rampant in the country. However, another issue of concern is the reaction of people to uh, the MPOX uh, crisis. I, uh, they, you would not uh you know stop people from being frantic when they hear that oh there is a widespread disease all over the country how can we stem down uh some of these frantic reactions to ensure people that hey it's not as serious as you might think it is the information drug net which has been a bane of most of our administration in the case of covid you could see i mean even my children in primary school 
we are always giving it today that the, the number is this today that is the number of covid is this they don't even know what is covid but they could read it they could hear it in the news so that level of information dissemination is what is required now nothing more just to put the people and get the right information disseminated on local radios in local languages in churches in markets there should be constant information vision. That's what the essence of National Orientation Agency. Radio Nigeria is there. It has FM stations in almost all the states. They should activate that mechanism of information dissemination. And then there should be an hour dedicated to it on TV stations. Of course, corporate social responsibility of TV, television stations should also be So in liaison with those agencies, because it's a public uh, interest matter, the media organizations in Nigeria, both the newspapers and this, should always carry flyers in their front pages announcing and giving precautions like they try to do with the issue of cholera here. They should get that informed. They did so well with that information aspect of it during the COVID-19. I would like to see that happen again this time around. They should activate that process and give Nigerians the information they require at the proper time in the proper places. Well, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Cletus Obun. It's been wonderful having you uh, speak with us and share your thoughts on some of these national matters on the program this morning. Thanks for having me, and Nigeria may be blessed. Thank you very much. God bless you.